Hey, how are things? Today is Saturday the 26th of December. My name is Mark McCormack and welcome to the Clockwork Junkie podcast. How is everyone keeping? I hope you got on well for Christmas Day. I hope you ate loads and drank loads and enjoyed yourself. I hope you're with family and friends. Um, normally today, of course, is the 26th. As I said, we want to go and have... It's a great day for sport today, normally. Um, especially in Ireland here, we like to watch the football and uh, watch the horse racing and maybe go for a few drinks. But obviously with all the shutdown and lockdowns, we can't do that now. So I'm sure people will be making different plans. Um, how did you get on yesterday? You can email and let me know. It's clockworkjunkiepodcast at gmail.com. Absolutely delighted to hear from you. Um, what are you at today? What's your plans for the week? Um, are you listening to the... I think, what's this? this today is day four of the 10 days scheduled for the podcast and marathon. Bum, bum, bum. Um, I've really enjoyed doing them so far. I have one or two already recorded coming up and I have to record a few still. Um... If you'd like me to talk about anything, um, it's clockworkjunkiepodcast at gmail.com. Give me your opinions, give me your thoughts. Now's a good time to do it. You have me recording it on a day and you're hearing it the same day most of the time. Um, so now is probably the best time to get in touch with me. Um, yeah, so look, I hope everyone was okay yesterday. I hope you had a good day. Um, I had quite enough day myself. I didn't do too much. Um, you know, I suppose, look, it's, it's all the big fuss for the one day, but it's grand to see the... You know, the, if you have children, see their faces in the morning. I see my little niece's faces um, yesterday morning. She came down and got a few presents, and it was fantastic. Um, I got my own Chris Kringle present, which was brilliant as well. I got um, my sister Tracy had me. She bought me a blender with four or five, four different cups to blend in, and a bottle of Hennessy. So that's absolutely fun. That's like um, the nectar of the gods to me, you know. Although a bottle could last me four months or could last me a weekend, depending on when I get the urge to have a drink of it. But um, no, thank you very much for that. Really, really appreciate it. So today, you know, I don't really have a topic to be honest. I have uh, there was just bits and bobs that um, you know, look, I I I'll be I'll be perfectly straight with you. Do you remember when I told you if if you've listened to the podcast the whole time, you'll remember me telling you this. I told you that before I got depression that I was going to start the podcast anyways. And I was going to do a podcast, I had an idea to do it. And uh, then the depression hit really, really hard and then I didn't do the podcast. Well, fuck me if I wasn't flicking through stuff the other day and I found a couple of the episodes that I'd done. Now, the, the look, as I said, with this one, I'm still waiting for uh, different equipment to come to make the audio better. And I give you my word that will be better next year, 100%. So thank you for sticking with me. But it was even worse, would you believe it, back then. But I found a couple of things and I found one thing. It's only about a minute long. I have to play it. Now, I'm going to be harpooned for playing this. It's my sister, Laura, right? So what I, what I planned to do at the time was ask everyone kind of a general knowledge 10 question thing. And I did it with a few people. It was her go, you know. And I asked her 10 questions. She got eight of them right and got two of them wrong. But the two of them she got wrong were just fucking hilarious. The humanity in the answers. Now, it's not that she thought she was fine. She knew straight away she'd made a mistake and she's going to absolutely harpoon me. So I'm not even going to tag her on this podcast as her that she's in it. So she'll have to find out of somebody else. Um, so it definitely won't come from me. So what I'm going to do is, uh, if you just picture those 10 questions, I have all the questions edited out. I just have the two questions that she answered that were absolutely hilarious, in my opinion. Um, and here they are. <laughs> okay, yeah, go on. No, that's it? Yeah. Okay, question number one. What beer is marketed as the king of beers? Uh, the Grizzly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> beer is in B-E-E-R. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the answer is Budweiser. <laughs> oh, I was going to go, if you left me, I would have said Budweiser. Oh, dear God. <laughs> Where would you find? I'm really afraid to ask this. Where would you find the sea of tranquility? Um, I don't know. Pass. Yes. How's it? I guess. How's it? I guess. Um, yeah. Madagascar. No, it's on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> With all the grizzlies. <laughs> What pair is marketed as the king of bears? The fucking grizzly. Absolutely brilliant answer. 
Oh God, I absolutely love that. Um, sorry, Laura. Um, yeah, look. So, I suppose not everyone had a great day yesterday. I'm sure some people were really, really sad and felt lonely. Um, you know, like I, they always say, like make contact with someone if they're on their own at Christmas, and then I suppose you kind of do then, and then like that person knows that you're doing it because you might think they're lonely, and it might even make them feel worse. But I say do it anyways. You know, um. It's not nice to be alone during Christmas. It's not nice to be sad during Christmas. I know there's people who would have lost family members in the last couple of weeks. And it'll be very, very hard Christmas for them. I know my mum's dead a year and a half. Our first Christmas was a nightmare without her. She was always kind of the glue of the house. The, what would you call it? The kingpin. Kind of the top dog of the house, you know. Um, So it was very, very hard. Um, And I know it's probably the same for an awful lot of people now. But it does get easier. Um, Even... Yesterday I went out to the graveyard um, just to say hi, to wish her a happy Christmas for myself and my brother James, who obviously is on the show loads of times, James in Toronto. And, uh, you know, that was nice. I, I wasn't sad when I was out there. I was just happy remembering the memories that we had together and the fun times that we had. And, you know, that's great to have those memories. It's great to appreciate those memories. And I do, every single one of them. And I know any good thing that she had that I have inside me, so... You know, if I have all the goodness of my two parents and what I've learned for myself as time as life went on, I, I won't go too far wrong. Um so yeah, I was out there a couple of days ago, um, in uh Sean's place. Now Sean does he's on the podcast a good bit. He does uh You Me and BPD and he had a new system out there and I said I'd try out a few jokes just to hear what it would sound like. Um uh with the I, I think the audio is much better than the audio that I have at the moment. So I said, I, I just try it and see what they're like. Um, I never really thought I'd have any reason to ever play them jokes. Or, I don't know, they're not, that mightn't be the funniest jokes in the world, but one or two of them are humdingers, you know. And I said, like, I'd never get an opportunity to play them. But what do you know? Today's the opportunity to play them. Um, so I'm going to stick on a few of them and get a few of them jokes, you know. Um, see what you think of them. Hey, how are things? This is Mark here, and welcome to the Clockwork Junkie podcast. I hope you're all keeping well. I hope you're all keeping safe. I hope you're eating too much, I hope you're drinking too much, but most of all, I hope your mental health is keeping fine. I did that by accident. What do you call a man with a shovel in his hand? Doug. What do you call a man with no shovel in his hand? Douglas. What do you call a man floating up and down in the water? Bob What do you call a girl Standing in between two houses Elaine What do you call a man Having an epileptic fit In a bunch of leaves Fucking Russell uh, So a Paddy Englishman A Paddy Irishman A Paddy Chinese man Went for a job on the building site The foreman said I haven't really got a whole lot of work now But I'll try you all out for the week You know he says to Paddy Irishman, what can you do? He says, oh, says Paddy Irishman, I'm great at the old plastering. I can plaster, no problem. I'm great at plastering houses. Right, says the foreman, you go plastering there for a week and I'll come to you at the end of the week and give you a few pound and if you're good, I'll keep you on. No problem, says Paddy Irishman. So he goes to Paddy Irishman then, what are you good at? Oh, he says, I'm great at doing roofs, putting on slates and stuff like that. Absolutely brilliant at it. So... Right, says the foreman, you go off and do slating and I'll come back at the end of the week and he says, I, I, I'll... Uh, See what you're like, I'll give you a few pound, and if you're good, he says, I'll keep you on for the following week. So he says to pa- he, he, he says the Paddy Chinese man, then he says, what are you good at? So he says, oh, nothing, he says, I, I'd never worked on a building site before, but I really need a job, you know. So the foreman says, right, look, I'll put you in charge of supplies, and if you're good, I'll come back at the end of the week, and, you know, and I'll keep you on for, and I'll give you a few pound, keep you on for the second week. So the Friday came anyways, and the foreman was going around giving everyone money. But Jesse came up to the houses, and they were all there. Paddy Irishman was there, and he was just finishing up. Fucking plastered perfect. Absolutely a world-class top job. Jesus says the foreman, you're absolutely brilliant, he says. He says, uh, here's your money, he says, and come back next week, you're brilliant. Walking down the far side then, he seen Paddy Englishman there, and Jesus, he's absolutely the best tiling you've ever seen in your life. All the roofs were done, there was... a just a world, world-class job. He says, here's your few pound. He said, uh, "He said, come back next week. He says, you're brilliant. 
no sign of Paddy Chinese man at all. He looking fucking everywhere from could he went up the site and down the site and left and then right and could not find him. <clears throat> so eventually he sees this wheelie bin. And he hears giggling coming from him and he hears a bit of noise. He says, What's the fuck's in that place? So he goes over and he takes off the lid. And there's Paddy Chinese man says, Supply But there was a fella standing at a bus stop. <laughs> there, was a fella, there was a fella standing at a bus stop, right? And uh, he had a bit of a speech impediment, you know? Um, I would cheek saying this because I was stutter, but he kind of talked least way. So it was a bit of a speech impediment. I'm allowed to make fun of this because I have one myself. So shut up, all you, uh, you get offense to the jokes. So he, um, the bus was coming towards him, you know? He stands out and he, or he kind of p- puts the hand out and he goes <laughs> trying to call the bus. The bus goes straight by him. <laughs> Fuck's sake, he says, you know. So the next morning he's waiting then and the bus, he sees the bus coming again and he kind of puts out his hand and puts one foot out and he goes <laughs> <laughs> trying, to fly, trying to flag the bus down. The bus goes straight by him. <laughs> For fuck's sake. So the next day then he's, and he's saying fucking I ain't get to the bus today and this minute the bus comes flying down. He stands right out in front of the bus Two arms wide open, two legs wide open. Stop, stop. Next minute, bang. Bus hits him, kills him stone, kills him stone dead. And uh, of course, the fucking police were called, the cops were called, ambulance services were called. Your man dead. So the cops were there and they were chatting to the couple of eyewitnesses to Cena. And said, what happened? Yes, the bus came down. Your man stood out with the two hands up and the two legs out like that. And he was trying to stop the bus. Bus bang straight into him. <clears throat> so they said, where is the bus driver? And one of the people said, that's him there standing in the corner. So he goes over to the bus driver. And he says to the bus driver, he says, why did you knock down this poor, poor man? And the bus driver said, because he was making fun of me. <laughs> Hey, just a quick message to say a thank you to everybody who supported the Clockwork Junkie podcast. If you would like to support the podcast, you can do so now only through PayPal. All donations are welcome and you can find us at paypal.me forward slash clockwork junkie. That's paypal.me forward slash clockwork junkie. Thank you. Hey, just on that there, um, on the PayPal thing, I suppose now would be a good time to address that. I genuinely want to say thank you to anybody who has donated to the podcast so far. Um, it allows me to keep going doing the podcast. It allows me to put something towards uh, buying all the equipment that I need and all the different bits and bobs. Um, I spoke yesterday on the podcast about not letting perfection cripple you and just to keep plowing along if you have a dream and want to do something anyways. And I, I, I'm doing it with, look, I'm doing a lot of them on my phone. I have other little bits and bobs that I do sometimes. Um, but my goal obviously and I think I've said this from the start um, I was pretty honest with everybody I said I want this to be my full time job and I genuinely do I haven't changed at all um, it is hard work it is there's a lot of work to a lot of hours um, but look I love it I understand some people wouldn't love it I absolutely love doing the podcast I love getting emails I love getting messages I love coming up with topics I love talking to guests I love every single second of it um, and donating to the podcast makes it possible for me to keep doing it um, and to add to the equipment at times as well. So I want to thank anybody who has donated to the podcast so far and I'd like to thank anybody who plans to donate in the future. Um, if you don't have a PayPal account, it literally takes about 90 seconds just to set, set one up. It's not a year subscription or a monthly subscription. It's any amount you want to give as a donation. So if you listen to the podcast, you like it for whatever reason and you find value in it, you can go and donate. Um, and that's uh, paypal.me forward slash clockwork junkie paypal.me forward slash clockwork junkie so that's another christmas day out of the way 2020 nearly finished 2021 coming upon us 
it's been a really hard year for a lot of people losing jobs and running out of money and being under pressure and people dying people in uh, nursing homes dying or elderly it's really really hard time and i don't know if 2021 is going to be any better certainly the first half i expect us to be in lockdown until march um i think it's safe to say that at the very least it'll probably go on more um you know it's like i suppose i said yesterday just we have to start looking after ourselves um i know people always say like check in on your neighbors and do do that as well of course but just you know you can't really do anything proper unless you look after yourself and i think we know that already by now try to mind yourself try to go for a walk get a bit of fresh air um you know get a bit of you know let your mind think um and we're going to have to just batten the hatches next year and belt away again but i mean look if you have a roof over your head if you have food to eat you're 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 better than half of the people on the planet already so it's not um you know it's 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 excluding the deaths which are absolutely terrible but everything else is not as bad as it seems you know in my eyes anyways i know to be a pressure saying well it's easy for you to say that mark i'm going to lose my job you know that's not nice it's not nice at all you could have been working there 15 or 20 years but you're still alive like your family's still alive you know sometimes it's you know and i'm not religious as you know but like sometimes just be happy that we're blessed with what we have you know to, to to use that phrase just to be you know what i mean as as i i said many a time if everyone threw their troubles into a table you wouldn't be long taking your own ones back and that is the truth so yeah so going off from yesterday i want to wish everybody a happy christmas day i want to wish everybody a happy new year um i have a lot of good stuff coming up in the podcast um yesterday's and today's were kind of short podcast because i didn't want to really take up too much of your time but i have a couple of longer ones coming up during the week um i have four of them recorded already and i have two to record um i think i might have told you already if i haven't i can do so now um tomorrow is work life balance is shit that's where i speak about your work life balance i go into a bit more about the pressures of you having to go to work and what's expected of you there and how you know it could be absolutely killing your soul um the following day then i have one called fuck off why is it so hard to stick to your new year's resolutions so hard like I, I mentioned on the podcast before, it was not this year, but the year before, last year, I, I, my goal was to lose weight. And by the end of the year, I was seven pounds up. Like, Jesus Christ, it's so hard to keep New Year's resolutions. You start and, you you know, it's a clean slate and it's just so hard to keep them. And I talk about that and I talk about why it's so hard and give a couple of examples. Um, and then I have one growing up with a stutter. I had a terrible stutter when I was younger. That's why I didn't feel too bad. I was allowed to make that joke about your man with this stuff the booze. Because I couldn't speak when I was younger. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's a good one. And then I have a great one then with Karen Burke. It's uh, Youths Are Not The Problem. And it talks about youths and, uh, you know, what, what it was like in our day compared to their day. What it was like 10 years ago compared to now. The pressures that they have on themselves as well. So it's very, very interesting. I have to record two more podcasts. One for Chris or for New Year's Eve and one for New Year's Day. I cannot wait to do them. Um, and again, look, I, I mentioned that to start. I'll mention it again. You know, feel free to contact me. Clockworkjunkiepodcast at gmail.com. I absolutely love hearing from you. That's half the fun for me. Um, I, I love hearing people that are, that are you're listening to the podcast. Um, I suppose one thing that I didn't say is, you know, if you listen to the podcast, let me know which country you're in or which county in Ireland or if you're in England, what part. Um, very, very interesting to kind of see where the demographic is. Um, and I always like to know as well how, how you listen to the podcast, whether it's walking, um, whether when you're going for a jog, whether if you're lying in bed or whatever. I listen to them doing all of those things. Um, I'm very keen to know that. Um, and yeah, look, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much for all the support. I got loads of kind messages over Christmas. A lot of people wish me happy Christmas Day um, to me and the family. I, I really, really appreciate I really, really appreciate that. Um, the fact that I know I haven't met 99% of you before and it's only through the podcast. So look, I wish nothing but happiness and success to everybody. And if you're feeling down or if you're feeling bad and you don't feel great, please, please, please talk to someone. Um, it's so important. I will chat to you bright and early in the morning. Bye-bye. Thank you.